Asus isn't giving up on dual screen PCs anytime soon. This year it revamped the ZenBook Duo with a faster processor, a tilting second screen, and better software to use two screens at once. And with a $1,000 starting price, you also won't have to pay a premium to use it. While it's still not quite a home run, I think the ZenBook Duo has plenty of upgrades over last year. It's just a much more compelling machine and it's a dual screen PC that you may actually want to buy. Let's get right to what makes the ZenBook Duo special this year. The 12.6 inch ScreenPad Plus sits right below the main screen as usual, but now when you open up the laptop, it tilts up slightly by seven degrees, which uh, honestly makes a huge difference. It's just very ergonomic. It makes it easier to see what's on that second display. Before I kind of had to lean forward and look over the keyboard a little, and um, it increases airflow, which is nice for cooling. And I think the thing that's really interesting is it just kind of makes the both displays appear as if they're kind of one continuous screen. So dragging apps across them, multitasking across them just seems more seamless in a way. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen a rising second screen from Asus. There was also in the ROG Zephyrus Duo, which was a fantastic machine, but now they're taking that idea and bringing it down to a much, much cheaper notebook. The new ScreenPad Plus is also brighter, so it's much more useful outdoors. And I also appreciate that the interface just feels zippier overall. Interacting with the ScreenPad Plus feels more like a modern smartphone than an aging tablet PC, which kind of was the feeling from last year's. Asus has also optimized its dual screen software in ways that I really appreciate. Uh, there's an app explorer that lets you easily see everything running on your machine and lets you quickly move apps between both screens. Uh, there are new gestures you could turn on to just kind of flick an app down from the top screen or the bottom screen. Those were kind of useful, but honestly, I had more luck just dragging the title bar of a window over to the shortcuts that automatically pop up. So those can either automatically move a window to the other screen or maximize it across both screens. Thanks to the more compact ScreenPad Plus hinge, Asus says that the Duo is 50 grams lighter than last year's model, clocking in at 3.53 pounds. And that change led to other design upgrades too. It's also three millimeters thinner than before, measuring up to 16.9 millimeters thick. Now that's obviously more hefty than a standard ultra portable like the XPS 13, which measures 14.7 millimeters thick and weighs 2.8 pounds. But the Duo still feels a bit more compact than last year. And just given the potential for productivity with a second screen, I'd gladly make that sacrifice. And beyond the revamped ScreenPad Plus, the ZenBook Duo also looks almost the same as last year. It has Asus's standard magnesium alloy frame and sharp lines. There's also a better selection of ports, including two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports. The last model had USB-C, but no Thunderbolt. There's also one USB 3.1 Type-A connection, a full-size HDMI jack, a micro SD card reader, and the usual headphone jack. The most notable upgrades are within the ZenBook Duo. So now it supports Intel's 11th gen Tiger Lake CPUs. It can run up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, and you can even include NVIDIA's MX450 graphics. The Duo is also Intel Evo certified, which means it's gone through Intel's testing to make sure it's actually powerful and offers a decent amount of battery life. And despite having that seem like a quick branding opportunity, I do think the ZenBook Duo lives up to that Intel Evo badge. Our review unit featured an Intel Core i7 1165G7 CPU with only eight gigabytes of RAM, but it still felt snappy as I juggled multiple apps at once. And to be honest, with a machine like this, I'd really just say start with 16 gigabytes of RAM as your minimum, uh, but still with eight gigabytes, I was able to juggle a lot of apps, dozens of browser windows, Slack, Spotify, Evernote, my usual workflow, it all seemed to run pretty fine. Intel's XE graphics also proved worthy. It scored nearly 4,000 points higher than last year's model in 3D Mark Night Raid. I didn't have much of a chance to do gaming on the Duo, but the score alone makes it clear it'll be able to play a low impact game like Overwatch uh, without much of an issue. Nvidia's MX450 GPU should offer more power, but I haven't been able to test that either. More important than games though is the ZenBook Duo's raw computing power, and it's vastly improved PC Mark 10 and Geekbench scores make it clear that Intel's Tiger Lake hardware is a major upgrade. It also lasted 11 hours and 40 minutes in our battery test, which is close to many ultra portables, though five hours less than the XPS 13. For the most part, I found the ScreenPad Plus to be much more useful than last year, just because I could actually see it better. It's still a little too short though. It's a very wide screen. So even though Asus shows us examples of them running three apps side by side, I don't think Windows is compact enough to really run that very well. I prefer using uh, up to two apps on the ScreenPad Plus. Typically I'll have something like a browser or productivity app in my top window. 
and YouTube and Spotify below. That just gives me some nice, easy media controls and, you know, lets me watch YouTube at work, but don't tell anybody. The Zenbook Duo's main 1080p 14-inch screen looks great as well, with plenty of brightness and vibrancy to make videos and photos pop. You can definitely tell that it's higher quality than the ScreenPad Plus. It supports 100% of the sRGB gamut, but the fact that both can reach 400 nits of brightness makes it easier to pretend as if they're one single display. One major downside to the Zenbook Duo is that Asus had to shove the keyboard and trackpad below the ScreenPad Plus once again, which puts them right at the bottom of the laptop. And that's just kind of an uncomfortable position if you've never used a computer like this before. The keyboard is kind of cramped and uncomfortable to type on, though I got used to it and the keys actually have a decent amount of travel, so I can live with that. But the trackpad, I think, is gonna be a bigger issue for a lot of people. You know, it is just a tall sliver of a trackpad on the right side of the keyboard. It doesn't really give you much room for multi-touch gestures or controls or anything like that. It is pretty responsive and accurate, so as a trackpad, it works just fine. But I think a lot of people these days are spoiled by the enormous touchpads we've seen on things like the Apple MacBook Air or the XPS 13. Um, having a tall, minuscule trackpad is gonna be tough to live with. If you're considering the Zenbook Duo, you'll have to think hard on whether a short second screen is worth losing a more ergonomic keyboard and touchpad. At least this year, you'll have to pay a lot less for the privilege of owning the Duo. It starts at $1,000 with a Core i5 1135G7 CPU, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte SSD. Those are actually useful specs for mainstream users, but if you're really planning to put it through its paces, I'd recommend bumping up to the $1,500 model with 16 gigabytes of RAM and the NVIDIA MX450 GPU. Our review unit, which once again was limited to 8 gigabytes of memory, sells for $1,300. And you can spec the Zenbook Duo all the way up to $1,700 with 32 gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and NVIDIA's MX450 GPU. So overall, Asus's Zenbook Duo isn't a perfect machine, but I do think it's a compelling upgrade and a notable step forward from last year's model. It's no wonder we gave it our Best of CES 2021 award for PCs. It just really stands out from a crowd of increasingly stale and similar looking ultra portables. I don't think dual screen PCs are for everybody just yet, but Asus has just made a case for why you may want one. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more of our PC reviews, and we'll definitely be keeping an eye on more dual screen PCs. If you dug this video, be sure to like and subscribe.